for many years now, you've been able to connect an Excel file to a Power BI dataset and create pivot tables. But you were never able to interact with that Excel file online until now, which opens up some really interesting opportunities. I'll show you how to set it up. Let's go. This feature is brand new, so things are going to change. I'll try and keep that updated in the notes below. So maybe even before watching this, check the notes in the description and see if there's been any updates that I've flagged. Okay, let me show you the end result and then I'll show you how you set this up. So I've got a Power BI desktop file here. I've built a report, I've published that report, then I've connected to it. And again, I'll show you how to do all this in a second. And I've connected to it with Analyze in Excel. And here is now my Excel file in the online, the web version, I'm in the browser here. And what you could never do before was interact with this stuff. So if I click over here and I click on a slicer, the numbers will change, okay? It's all interactive. I can even click inside my pivot table and start dragging things around. So I can drag my type into my rows here. I could swap out my number of vehicles as well, or get rid of the cost. So fully interactive online, which is awesome. And you can embed this in a Power BI app, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So where do we start? So I've built a bit of a dull looking Power BI desktop report, and then I've clicked publish and it's now in my powerbi.com workspace. Okay, from this data set, I can go to the three dots and say, analyze in Excel. Or if I was actually in the report, I could go export and analyze in Excel, okay? When you do that Analyze Excel, if you're prompted to install um, certain um, updates, it says sometimes it says updates required, try ignoring that because sometimes it works anyway. You may already have the items installed depending on your version of Office. So when I click on this Analyze in Excel, I don't get the warning because I've already done this in the past. And essentially you get an Excel file that is in your downloads folder. Okay, so I am just gonna open up that file and it'll create a blank pivot table that is connected to the data set stored here in the Power BI service. You might be prompted to enable content and then your elements in your Power BI data set show up here. If you want to use anything in the values box, currently I believe, let me just try it. I can't put the cost column into the values box. It says it cannot be placed here, but anyway, you should always use measures. So I'm gonna put my cost into my values and my uh, color of vehicle in the columns and my type of vehicle in the rows. And you can even right click and add a slicer for whatever you want. Let's add a little slicer for the type of vehicle. Okay, so we are good. Now you need to save this to a OneDrive or SharePoint folder that you have access to. And also you will need to share access currently to that OneDrive or SharePoint folder or file to whoever you want to access this if you're gonna share this report online as well. I'm just gonna save this. So I'm just gonna do a file save as and save it into this um, folder called demo. And I'll just call the file that, that'll do fine and save. Okay, it's the next step that's really important after this. It's like, if I just wanna share this workbook with somebody, fine. But I'd like to get this workbook into Power BI. Okay, so this is the little trick for getting this workbook into Power BI. 
you go into your Power BI workspace. Okay, so I'm here, I'm in the workspace. I want to pull in this Excel file so that it's all in one cohesive space. And then I can create an app and share the report and the Excel file. So you don't have to do this step. You could simply share that Excel file with people and they could interact with it. Okay, so this is one step further of embedding the whole thing together in one Power BI spot. Okay, so the way to do that, down the bottom left here is get data. This is how you pull in a, um, an Excel file into your Power BI workspace. So you click on the get data and then you're prompted with these options here. The one we want is files. So you want to bring in your own workbooks or data from Excel. So we go get. And then you, if it's saved to SharePoint, go there. If it's saved to OneDrive, which is what I just did, I'm clicking here. And then basically you just browse through your, your folder list that gets shown up and go and find the file. So it's under demo, connected Excel book. This is the file we just saved one minute ago. Click on this. And then you go up to connect up in the top right corner. This screen then pops up. Okay, what's this about? Well, we want the one on the right, which is bring in your Excel workbook and see it exactly as it is in Excel Online. This option is if you've actually built a data model or power queries in Excel, so you can bring that in. So we want this option, so connect. And here it is sitting in my Power BI workspace. So it says, be careful. Hopefully there'll be some way of turning that off in future. And now in the Power BI workspace, I will have access to this. I can click on it. My pivot table window will pop out by the side. It's a little bit slow in rendering the um, slicer, but it gets there eventually. And it should work. Bike, car, all three. Okay, and you should be able to drag and drop stuff around here as well. Okay, it doesn't save these changes. Okay, if you've got edit access, you can edit this workbook and then it will save whatever changes you make. But purely in this view, it's a, it's a read-only experience. When you click this reload button, you're back to where you started. Um, one little bug I found um, or, well, yeah, it is a bug really, because if you accidentally hide this power, um, this pivot table window, so you click the cross here, there's no way of getting it back. Okay, you have to reload. So hopefully they fix that up too. A little side note, if you're on a monthly channel version, like a more up-to-date channel version of Excel, or you know, this is six months on and you're watching this video, you may have under the data tab, under get data, this connector from Power BI. It's also under here, under insert pivot table from Power BI, okay? Either of those do the same thing. They pop up a list of all your data sets down the side and you should be able to connect to one of them. So here's the one I've just loaded up. And from this point forward, it's the same process as if you done analyze in Excel, but we can just put cost in here. We could put type in here and we could add a slicer for color. Same process from that point forward. A couple of ways of sharing. Um, I could actually give access to a colleague via um, a viewer role, okay? However, be aware, it doesn't work. Let me show you what I mean. So here we go. I'll go into my workspace here and I'll go to access for the entire workspace. And I will add a different user, a pro user, okay? And I'll give them viewer access add. So there they are with viewer access. Right, let me jump across to my other 
um, the, the other user. So here I am in the workspace. I go, I can see the report if I click on the report and then I can go to the workspace here and I can click on the Excel report. And then I wait and then I wait. Now, firstly, in order, currently it seems, in order for you to get any sort of access to the file, I also have to give the OneDrive file access permission. So it's not just a Power BI thing. This is a, I need to give access here. So if I go back into um, my reports here and I go to this file here and I say settings, just to bring up the actual link. Okay, I can click on this and this will open up the Excel file. I'm just gonna share the Excel file from here. You can do it from within OneDrive, you know, whichever way you share your file. So I'm just gonna share it from here. It doesn't matter which way you share it. It's, it's the sharing methodology for OneDrive and SharePoint. It's pretty consistent across whichever way you do it. So the option I then choose is um, specific people. I don't know if this is the best way, but this is the way I would do it to start with. So I'll be interested to see how Microsoft recommend you do this. So specific people, allow editing, mm, no, apply. And then in here, I have to put the people like the pro user. And you could send them an email, but I think it could be confusing. So I'm just gonna say copy link and then not do anything with that link. Okay, so I could just close this down. That user now has access. So if I go back to that user, okay, which they couldn't open before, but now I've given them access, they should be able to click here and at least see something. Okay, we've got further. So it says, do you want to refresh? Yes, I do. But they get this warning, okay? external refresh failed. So with viewer access, you do not have access to change anything. So if I try and click on the slicer, you get this warning. If you try and drag and drop anything down the side, you get the warning. You need build access. So you can either make somebody a member or a contributor or an admin of the workspace, which can be a bit extreme, or you can grant them build access um, separately. So by that, what I mean is you go to the workspace. Okay, I need to go to the, sorry, I'm still logged in as the user. I need to go back in as the person who published the report. Here I am. Okay, so here's the data set that I can see. I need to go in here and give them manage permissions and actually add build access. So there's pro user, viewer, add build. So now I go back to the pro user account. Here it is. I click on this. This time I should be able to do everything. So it's a two step process. You've got to give permission to the Excel file via the OneDrive SharePoint sharing option. And in Power BI, you've got to give build access in some way, either directly via permissions or by making somebody a member or a contributor or by giving build access when you share the app. And I'll mention the app next. So here's the pro user and they can now interact with it because they have build access. These things may change, okay? So please read the, the description notes in case there's been some update and I've referred you to some other article or added some notes. Okay, let's talk about apps. So I'm gonna go back as the um, user here. I'm gonna take off build permission. So they're just a viewer. I'm actually gonna remove them completely from this workspace. So if I go here and I say access, I don't wanna give access to them here. 
the move. Okay, the best way to share your reports is via apps. So I am gonna create an app from this workspace. And I'll just call it my demo. Go for a lovely Excel green theme color. Okay. Under navigation, you can change the order that the things show up in, but under permissions, okay. Under here, I'm gonna put my pro user. And this is the key you have to, if you want them to use this Excel feature, you have to allow them to connect to the underlying data set. Okay, you don't have to give them permission to make a copy, but you do have to have this ticked, which then gives them build access permission. So depends, maybe you just want some people to do that, playing about with it, so you can do it at the granular data set level. Okay, so if I do that, I have that ticked, and let's do the mean thing of installing automatically. That means people can't uninstall it, which is a bit of a pain, but it shows up straight away for them. So let's go publish app, Okay, so now as the user, I come in here, I go to my apps. I find that somebody has kindly installed the app automatically. Yeah, here it is. And see the bin is grayed out. I can't delete it, which is really annoying sometimes. If this wasn't installed automatically, I just have to go to the get apps button and look for that app. It's fine. Okay, so there we go, click on it. And this app will now show up with the report and the Excel pivot table in the same spot. So here's my report. And then if I click on this one, obviously you'd rename them something a little bit different to make this a bit more user-friendly. Again, the warning pops up. and then you should be able to interact with it inside the app and change the pivot table and do whatever you need to do. So it's pretty cool. I like it. I think the having to grant permissions to the Excel file makes sense, but I don't like that experience. I think if you grant permissions to the app or the workspace or give build permissions, it should flow through somehow. Um, there's a few things to tweak on. I've got to test this out a bit more, but exciting times. You know, one thought is in the Power BI report, you could have a little hyperlink that would take you straight to here. So you could have put it next to one of the tables in the report, little hyperlink, click on a button, jumps you straight here. So if somebody wants to analyze the data their own way, or they don't want to see cost, they want to see, I don't know, the max cost instead then they got the option to start exploring and it's all connected together rather than having these dumps of Excel data that people then have to update manually, etc. Okay, let me know what you think. Please share and subscribe and like this. Really helps promote the channel and helps other people find it. So, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you find this useful. Let me know what you think and I will catch you later.